Hello everyone. Today I want to show you the Bamzuki Contest Editor. And I want to give some background on this because it's a pretty big deal. But feel free to skip ahead if you just want to see what it can do. So, a bit of history. Many years ago, after Series 3, but before Street Rules, Paul Tyler, the creative genius behind Bamzuki, published a video demonstrating the contest editor. It seemed like it was proposed to be part of the rest of the Bamzuki software to download, called something like the Eland Creator or Zookieland Creator. Unfortunately, that never happened, but at least we knew it was a thing. Many years later, the community figured out there were some of the contest editor assets in the Street Rules build and managed to get it to run in a very limited capacity, where you could build some stuff, but not run anything, and most actions just crashed the software. But here we are now. This is the product of resources pulled from multiple versions of the Bamzuki software, hacked together to get what is the closest I think we can to the official contest editor. And it works pretty well. So, Let's take a look. So, what we're going to do is build a contest from start to finish and then import it into the simulator to try out. So, we're going to start with picking out uh, something from this list of agents and we're going to start with the polo table, which is the normal table you see in most contests. And you just click add. And there it is. Okay. And there's a bunch of parameters you can play around with here. Uh, we're just going to get rid of the hole. So just drop its width and height to zero. We don't need that. And let's add something else. So you need to use the, the add tool, kind of like building a zook. And let's add a cube. And we'll click add. You can also like click in the area to add it wherever you like. Um, so this is going to be our finish line. And you can click and drag agents around. So let's drag this to the end of the table. Let's say, say 260. So I like nice round numbers, so I'm going to set them here. You know, up to you whether you want to drag or set the position manually. Um, and of course, the finish line needs to be wide, so we go to the physical tab. Um, not that kind of width. I mean, we can have it kind of thick, why not? And then we'll make it long. There we go. And it's a bit thick um, height-wise, so let's drop the height. Drop it down to 2, maybe? Now a bit more. Okay. And I don't really like the texture for this, we're going to make it nice and bright. So we'll go to visual and scroll down. We've got all these textures. Again, just like in the Zook kit when you build a Zook. And let's pick just the plain white. Oh, actually, that's some sort of circle or spot texture. I forgot that Street Rules has a sort of transparency in some of its textures. Um, how about this one? Yeah, here we go nice plain white uh, background and we'll change the color to purple um, just like the classic contests okay and of course we're going to want some obstacles so again let's add something and let's pick a ball this time let's click on the table There we go. It's quite small. Um, we're going to make it bigger. 
penalty. And I think we'll just leave everything as is, um, except for the visual. So let's give it a nice texture. It's a lot of gritty metallic textures in street rules. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Makes it kind of stripy. And I believe, um, oh, another feature here is snap to grid. And that kind of locks in uh, the agent you're dragging a bit. So it's a bit easier to kind of drag it sort of horizontally or vertically. Uh, but what I was going to say is I believe you can duplicate agents by holding, is it control? Yes, here we go. So I'm holding control, and I click and drag the agent, and instead we get a copy. And again, I think you can select multiple agents and do exactly the same thing. So it's quite easy to add loads of obstacles. So think of things like Zoot Cubes and Zoot Marbles where there's loads of the same obstacle. It's very easy to just kind of do this click and drag thing to uh, add lots of obstacles. So let's take a look at this from a different angle. Uh, it's a bit lopsided but that's okay. Um, we'll leave that for now. Um, those balls are fine. So Let's add another obstacle here, and I think think we'll do. That'll be it for the obstacles. That that'll be enough. So let's add a cylinder this time. It's quite small, but we're going to change that. Uh, so let's go to physical. I want this standing upright actually. Um, so actually, it's under general the orientation. So. Uh, which axis is going to make it go upright. Let's see if I can guess. Yes, okay, so we rotated it about the x-axis and we're going to make it longer. Cool, that looks good. And again, I think we want a different texture. Let's go with this one. I think this is what um, uh, sumo used in street rules. And let's move this a bit further down the, the table. Um, so, oh yeah, you can uh, drag it like this as well. Uh, fire the numbers. Okay, uh, a bit further down. Yeah, let's say 150. Again, I like nice round numbers. And somewhere along the z-axis, um, let's say minus 50, yeah, cool. And one other thing, we're going to give this avoidance. So this was a street rules feature. So I guess something worth mentioning is you can import contests to both classic and street rules with anything you've made in this. Um, but if you use a street rules feature, that's not going to work in classic. So avoidance, not going to work in the old simulator, but it will work in street rules. So our zooks are going to try and avoid this pot. And we're going to want another one of these. Um, let's try the control drag again. There we go. Um, but my positions are a bit off. 150, and this one's going to want to be 50. Cool. Okay, I think that will do us for obstacles, but of course we need our zooks. Um, you know what, actually, let's uh, give this a test. So you can actually test the contest within the contest creator, which is pretty cool. Um, but obviously not much is going on here right now. Uh, without the zooks. Uh, so let's add some. So again, the zooks are in the agents list. 
and they're called the Zook placeholder, um, which gives you that default Zook ball. Um, and that's just going to represent where any Zook that's been selected for the contest will start. So let's put this at the other end of the table, down here. Let's say about, yeah, minus 250, sounds good. And we're going to put it in line with the poles, which I think were at minus 50 and 50. Let's take a closer look at this. It's pointing backwards, which probably means I made the contest backwards, but uh, we can fix that. So orientation, just going to rotate it around the y-axis change that to minus 90 and there we go and something I should have been doing is giving descriptions to each of the agents so we'll call this Zook1 and you can see the name kind of appears in the agents list here so you've got this list of agents which is everything you've added to the table so I didn't name these that was my mistake but if you click one it will select it. So let's go back to our Zook. I can see Agent 12 is the Zook. And let's duplicate this. It's going to want to race against another Zook. And you can see it's um, already uh, tried to rename it. Um, it's turned it to Zook 1, 2. So maybe I shouldn't have given that a label Zook 1, I should have just called it Zook, so then it would have been Zook and Zook 2. And let's align this up again, so minus 250, and I believe we put that other one to 50. Okay, and that looks good. Okay, let's give this another test. Actually, before we keep going, I'm going to save this contest just in case it crashes. Um, although I haven't had any uh, crashes yet. Um, so let's give it a name. Test contest 2. I already made a test contest. And there we go. And that will have saved it as a .contest file. And let's say our contest just crashed. Uh, it didn't, but let's just say it did. Um, and we've reopened the contest editor. Uh, unsurprisingly, you can just go to open, and there it is, mm, open, and it's a good thing we saved our contest. Uh, so, uh, let's get back to testing. So, the contest editor saw that we had some zooks on the table, and it's asked us to select some. Uh, so let's go with the house zooks senti, and it asks again for a zook because we had two zook placeholders on there, uh, and we'll go with predator. And where are we? Here we are. And let's test it again. So you'll notice there's no countdown and the zooks aren't moving, and that's because they have a separate button to kick them off. And that's started them, uh, but as you can see they're not doing much, uh, and that's because we've given them no target, no behaviours, so they just run in circles. Uh, so let's fix that. So. We'll need some targets for the Zook to follow. So let's add a new agent and we'll go with, it needs to be a target and it could be anything really, but we'll just go with a cube. And we'll drag it just over the finish line and we'll give it a name. We'll call it target. Why not? And let's see, I think 280 is fine. And we're going to line it with the Zook and the poles, the cylinders. So that will be minus 50. 
and we'll need the same for the other Zook. So I'm going to copy it with the... Oops. Misclicked there. So we're going to copy it with the control click. And let's line that up as well. So I believe that was 280 on the X and 50 on the Z. Okay, but we don't want people to actually see these. Um, so we're going to go to visual and untick visible. We'll do the same for the other one. So the cubes are still there, and you can kind of see their outlines in the editor. Um, but they won't be visible when running it in the simulator. Um, but they'll still be there so the zooks can follow them. Uh, so how are we going to make the zooks follow these? Well, these are behaviours that we need to add to the zooks. Uh, but let's remember the agents first. So we've got 14 and 15 for the targets. So let's pick one of our zooks and we'll go to behaviors this time. We'll click new. We'll click follow. And it will give us some more options. We can give it a description. Um, let's say follow target. And we'll click trigger on events and this is basically when is this behavior going to be active and we want it to happen from the start so that's this option at the top immediate so we'll click this arrow thing to bring it over to the right hand side and click OK and we don't need trigger off events we don't need destroy events but we do need targets we need to know which target our Zook wants to follow and we click it and we'll get a list of all our target agents. So we'll want target, I believe. We'll again click this arrow thing to drag it to the right hand side and then click OK. And that will be it, I believe. Um, that should be enough. So before I do it on the other Zook, let's uh, test it out. Again, we need to select our Zooks. We'll go with Senti and Predator again. And let's kick them off. And there we go. Senti is working. It's at least trying to get to the finish line. And there we go. It did it. So let's do the same for Predator. So, let's add that behavior to our other Zook. So, let's select Zook 2, back to behavior, click New, follow, description, we'll say follow 2, trigger on events, select immediate, OK, no trigger off or destroy events needed and select the target. So we go to our list of targets, we'll select target 2 this time, add it to the list, OK, and I think we're done. So let's give it a test. Select our Zooks once again, good old Senti and Predator, and hopefully they can have a proper race this time. So let's start the simulation. And there we go, they're both no longer running in circles. Predator fell off, but that's okay, and Senti wins. And there we go, that's a pretty basic contest, but I think that's a good demonstration of how you can make something from start to finish in the contest editor. So let's save this. 
and try it out in the Street Rules Simulator. So here it is, uh, Test Contest 2 in our simulator. And what we had to do was, so the contest editor saves its contest files under My Documents, My Bamzuki Contests. We had to copy that contest file um, and paste it under wherever your uh, Bamzuki install is. Um, and then under contests. And then you also have to add a DAT contest pack entry file. Uh, but I didn't show that, that's kind of boring. Uh, but you have to do that for any contest in the simulator. And yeah, here it is. Let's give it a whirl. I mean, we've already seen it run. Um, but it's good to see that it works in the actual uh, simulator. So you can share your contests with your friends and have nice competitions. I've just noticed uh, I left that target box solid, so Senti is getting stuck on that. So when you add your targets, uh, remember to make them non-solid. Um, so, there we go. That was good, wasn't it? One other thing worth mentioning is that importing and exporting goes both ways. So you can import a contest you didn't make in the editor. So let's say there's a really cool contest and you want to see how it works so you can replicate some of the stuff in it. Well, you can just put it in the contest editors folder and then open it. And there you go. Nice. So I guess the obvious question after all this is can I get this and how? And the answer is yes, hopefully soon. Um, my setup for this has been a bit ad hoc and messy, but hopefully in the near future we'll have all the assets needed packaged up nicely so you can easily install it and try it out for yourself. Uh, so. Yeah, I look forward to a new era of contest building.